different window, but... <laughs> Alright, so looking at the defensive units, the special units this time, uh, two Zekerlian, two Shenji, and a Flamer. Um, so basically units that we just spoke um, about. And on the uh, offense, we're not seeing that many calf this time uh, from Lamelis, but we do see uh, quite a few big shields, Imperial shields. They definitely grow more popular to, as a frontline unit. And lots of Imperial Pikes. Almost uh, half of their plays have Imperial Pikes there. Yeah, there's not, it doesn't look like the Sloth Blockers want to go for a Risky Sal layout. And obviously they've got a lot less cavalry in terms of their uh, their setup here. Yeah, but then, so, yeah, exactly. They've got like three or four plays with the Calf. So they definitely do expect to be fighting inside the city because that's where you need the Calf. So they won't be going for full defense. And they also don't have any javelins. So... They might destroy a tower or two, but we will be seeing them fighting inside the city, most likely. If you look at the hero difference, actually, this is something I noticed also quite a bit in, in different matches, is that uh, Blame Allies like to play very aggressively, and for that they bring a lot of uh, pole axes, but also the pikes, and they also bring a lot of damage. And if you look at the Slotblocker side, there's a lot more heavy armor with the short swords, with the pole axes. So that is typically in favor for the hero fight for Blame Alias. Uh, slot blockers more supportive for their units with the hero choices. Yeah, definitely. I agree with that one. It definitely makes a difference when you're, because you, if you're not really going to kill heroes with like an abundance of short sword and long swords anymore, um, you always get used for a, a great defensive side of things. But overall, you can't, if you're dying, it doesn't matter that like you can't defend for as long even if you've got that many people dealing damage um malls for example do a ton of damage and obviously the defenders uh last time round had a few good malls in there a few pike players and dealing tons of damage which is what they're good at doing and avoiding damage so just jump in and out of the battle and just deal a lot of damage to different heroes and different units at the same time uh, without even really affecting them too much if they're uh, if they're good players that is Mm -hmm. And obviously, for the most part, both teams are uh, all good players and ex very experienced players. So, yeah. there's a tribe taking yeah. out the Hawacha there to stop the siege tower. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, that's killing the units. So, trying yeah. to get that yeah. out of the way as quickly as possible. It looks like they've used a couple of tribes already as well. Um, but overall, just kind of doing the same as what happened the last time around. Sloth blockers uh, this time around are uh, making sure they try to damage and take out units and heroes, siege equipment mm -hmm. and stuff with the amount of artillery they can use. But the attacker's yeah. doing a great job to destroy it really quickly. Yeah, comparison. definitely. Look, looks like the left siege tower will reach the middle one. is actually only one HP, so one musket bomb will destroy that one. Far right tower will reach for sure. Far right, yeah, far right tower will definitely hit. Left tower will hit by the looks of it at this point in time. And then, yeah, the center one, which I'm surprised they've not took it down yet, but they have just, as I mentioned it, so it must have just been a, a little bit delayed from what I was expecting there, but... Waiting for well, it goes. You, Obviously, the longer, the closer wanna, it gets, the better. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you just want to buy more time, right? If you destroy it at the last second, it's even better. They could have waited a few more seconds because with two muskets there, you can always destroy it. First yeah, tower hits. So let's see how quickly they decide to get the into your The is there as well, so they're going to get the gate down without uh, mm -hmm. any worry of that, uh, where they can't do the tactic that obviously Blame Alias did, where they opened the gate themselves and had it free to knock you. <laughs> so yeah. that was... Uh, Definitely moving back into the city. I'm curious to see if they... Looks like they're setting up for the first supply here. And let's see uh, what Play uh, Malias is going to bring out of units. Yeah, they're kind of setting themselves up on both sides, which is clever. Um, obviously, we've seen that on the last matchup as well, but it was mostly cavalry that were kind of on the other side, ready to come in and pinch them. But we'll get A for free here. All the heroes are jumping on the point. Obviously, it doesn't matter how many people are on the point. At a certain point, it stops this fast cap or however fast it can go anyway. But everybody's now bringing all their units on. They went back to the supply point. Uh, Blame Elias will make sure they've got all their units ready. They're prepped and ready to push down wherever they choose to go, whether they go through the gateway, which they can now as well, and the two side stairwells. Either way, they're going to have to get set up, prepped, and ready to see what their options are going forward and looking at where the enemy have set their self up because you can't attack something you don't know what defense is like set up wise so find the find the weakest point and try and to use it to their advantage that's what blame Alice is looking to do here as you see them rotate mm -hmm. both sides and split 
hero wise just no need to wait on their units which is always the the worst part because i get myself carried away and run away ahead of my <laughs> units and forget that my units are like five times slower than i am but they're doing a yeah. full hero well, push by the uh, looks i think they might just... be trying something here. yep yeah they're they're going to try and find all the special units there's two sicilian and one shen unit or they might just be rushing they're just the rushing home here. point they're this just thinking new. yeah what do they do that going for they're... the right supply they start capping home they also start getting all the people rotated away from their units and then other people that die in here there's going to be a long a longer wait to come back in so if they can get hero kills it would be a good thing but yeah exactly they definitely got the hero kills but if slowbrokers played smart they try to delay some of the hero kills as much as they can so that uh blame aliens can't regroup at once yeah definitely uh, they it are seems that they're killing slowly heroes. killing up the units that are supplied the short sword is surviving for such a long time and yeah, they need to is just running possible. around constantly, popping iron sides, doing as much as he can. Mm -hmm. Now he's got a dual blade on him, and he's going to die a little bit quicker now as he gets stunned to the ground. But the cap has been capped quite a bit as the new heroes spawn in. It's all about whether they can kill more defenders, and so far the defenders are down to ten at the moment in terms of defense. So that means some of their units will oh be rotated away goodness. from the defensive side, which is going to be a rough situation. And this is I don't think this is like the death match. This is what we were talking about before. The blame Helios. They have the better hero setup here to kill all these heroes from slot blockers. Then <laughs> we're down slot to blockers 10, without 12. their units, they're just losing it. It's twelve v ten, but yet the only thing that's defending mm -hmm. that home point at this moment in time is a unit of IPG. And they're just stabbing away on the point, and as soon as they wipe, get wiped out, that will be it. But the heroes are all starting to go off and stop them coming towards the home point here. Matt fighting Demonic, Glaive versus Pike, and Pike is obviously a lot quicker in rotation here, but the unit will help him. Uh, in there that are defense some there. coming in, but there's also Armingers countering from Lemelius. I don't know where it'll look at this point in time. There's too much going on around the map here, but the Trebs do come in. From the attackers of blame Elias, but they're done to seven heroes so far but they're going to get that bottom supply point there for free now exactly. because everybody's rotated back off home which gives them a little bit uh a quicker rotate back to units and resell for their next push uh, that was a very creative way from blame Elias to actually get that supply slot blockers simply couldn't kill those heroes they had to bring in the units and that's when finally the heroes from blame Elias started to triple in and if you could see like that that short for just survived on its supply for so long yeah that was making mad. sure that uh, they bought so much time for them and if you look at the units it's insane but play Mania's only lost 31 yep. and the slot lost 130. yeah yeah just about to say that blame would have had a, like a lot more units out there good high quality units and to be honest they didn't the only thing that they would have lost to really was heroes and trebs because there was no units to fight them really mm -hmm. so that's quite a lot of units to lose at that point in time so far already um, sloth blockers are going to have to try and find the positions to, to get themselves set up in here as the attackers of Blame Elias are trying to set themselves up in different areas. It's not like the siege battles where you expect to, to kind of position yourself in the one place and not push from, but Blame Elias are kind of doing that kind of setup that you'd expect as the attackers of a siege. Um, maybe just doing that for now as they all set and then decide to push from there. But they know they've got the advantage in the hero kill in the department and they obviously showed that on that last bit of there when they all full pushed towards the home point. It's good though that sloth blockers aren't too focused on just the home point. They've also got units elsewhere ready for flanking positions and to stop anybody else coming in from the back of them. Um, but they're going to be on the home point, fighting on home point, which is going to be a really, really treble spot as the push comes in from Lord... Uh, from Lord... From Blame Elias. There's an IPG march just taking out so many units and stunning everything as the push comes forward. Hussar Charge comes in, but there's a lot of range of Senjis there that just wipe out that unit of cavalry. And the heroes are still alive here. Nine minutes left, and we've got two heroes down from the defenders. And there's a 200 unit advantage almost here going. Here comes a good Cav Charge coming in from the attackers here. Couple of heroes left on the point, but it's only three heroes left on the point, and there's about seven to eight heroes fighting for them. God Hashi has to survive the longest, and he's a musket player with medium armor, and that's not going to last well there. As you can see, they start to cap home and push their units straight forward towards where yeah. the supply, uh, the units of, uh, from the supply point are coming in. And Slot the coming in with the cap, but they're gonna have to find a great way to get in here. If I, I mean, can right, cap Mr. Great came in, there, in with but... one cav there. That was it, one cav. <laughs> They actually did make it through, so this might buy them some time. Perhaps the infantry can push through now. Um, hey, Blame Elias 
I might be running out a little only, bit of units. Left. There's only like five heroes damage. left. Make that three, mm -hmm. though, and I think that is it because nobody's going to be able to get to the point now. There's so many units getting clustered up, and they're all coming from the spawn point, which is so far away from the home. Blame Elias will take this one. Easy victors there. Yeah, that was a that was a very interesting strategy yeah. there. Lord Monkey there getting fight. MVP for the attackers. Three hero kills, sixty-six unit kills, uh, four assists. But look at that, Mizak, fourteen assists. There's also they have deja vu map with fourteen assists. So these boys were definitely in and around the fights, every single fight that was going on, helping their way as a team moving forward. Uh, most hero kills goes to Llama by the Alex and Cytonic, who are both equal on four hero kills. And then defense, Rotten Banana with the four hero kills on defense. Only seven unit kills though. Four heroes. He still gets MVP. Madness. Um, but yeah, overall, not really much you know, defense must be uh, a stats here. There's, fight. Not really, there's a few hero people. kills, but not enough unit wise to, to, to even do anything there. So it was kind of over very, very quickly. Um, what do you think? How do you, how do you think that went for Billy Melius then? They're kind of the way <laughs> you were expecting it. It was interesting. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, it was interesting to see. They have a reputation for being aggressive, and they've shown it, especially on the attack. That's that's where they where their strength is. Uh, I think um, very creative way by just going for the final. This this is not something we have seen in the tournament before. Um, definitely also not something I've seen in, in my ranked or my seats games. Um, so that's something we might try one day. Who knows? Uh, but yeah, very very impressive there from them. I think they've they could have just taken it head to head with the Slobbergers as well. If you look at how well they were fighting. Uh, stop blockers not always on the same page with their with their flanks, but they did show that they could almost get it head to head with play media. So that already is quite impressive. Yeah, definitely. It was uh, 